Well, it's Money Monday, and we'd like to answer some of your financial email questions that have been sent in. And Pat, this first one is from Jenna, who says, we may need to foreclose on our home because we're struggling to make our mortgage payments. Someone mentioned doing a short sale on our house instead. What is a short sale, and is it something we should look into? Uh, Jenna, first of all, you don't foreclose. The bank forecloses. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the mortgage company for. A short sale, as I understand it, Terry, is in, in essence you're selling your house short of what it's worth and short of what the loan is. And in order to make that work, you've got to get your lender to agree to it. And you go ahead and sell your house for $50,000 less than you owe on it. And uh, you say, whoopee. And then the bank comes around and says, all right, uh, we want our deficiency. And they can legally claim that in certain uh, jurisdictions. So you need to have a release. Uh, you can plead hardship if you want to, but the other guy has got to assume the mortgage or pick up a new mortgage that pleases the lender. And if the lender figures he'll be more secure with this next fellow than he will with you, he'll do it. But uh, uh, it's, it's, you know, you just lose money and you get out from under. But uh, in certain jurisdictions, if, if you have a non-recourse loan, which some people have, it means they, they just have to take the property and they can't have recourse to you. And some people just mail in the keys and say, it's been fun, we'll see you later. Wow. All right. This is from Reggie who says, Pat, I've read that if the United States government is to keep up with Medicare benefits, taxes will go up and coverage will have to go down. Do you think that's true? Do you see any other way to correct the problem? Uh, not in, unless you wholesale shoot most of the people over 70 including me. <laughs> but uh, no, seriously, I, 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 it's somewhat facetious, but the rising medical costs are just alarming. And uh, they will eat up the Medicare uh, funds. I think the year 2018 or something like that, it'll you know, go into a deficit position. Uh, but uh, the whole system is, we're talking about trillions of dollars of health liability in here. And uh, it can only be matched if the benefits are reduced substantially and uh, the taxes are raised at the same time. Young people, young people, going into the next 15 or 20 years, you're facing some really, really serious stuff. And uh, the government is going to get into your pocket any way they possibly can. And it's got to do it to pay off these benefits that they sound so wonderful when the congressmen vote them in. And, uh, <clears throat> I, you know, they can fix Social Security fairly easily just by raising the retirement age and making a few more payments. But with health care, it's going to it's going to be extraordinarily well, the difficult. The boomers are just coming into yeah, the equation. That's right. They're not that's, even there yet. They'll, they'll move in when they get to be 65. And from then on out, the, uh, all the actuarial tables go out of whack. I mean, it's really very serious. I don't know what else to say. This is from Mary, who says, I'm $15,000 in debt, and my husband is about $20,000 in debt. A lot of that debt happened before we were even married. I want to file for Chapter 7 bankruptcy or seek debt consolidation, but my husband is against it. He wants to stay in debt, and I want to get out of debt. Should I go ahead and apply for Chapter 7 or seek debt recon or cons consolidation? What do you think is best? Mary, the nice thing about the Bible is it says the husband's the head of the household. What you want to do is absolutely nutty. Uh, to declare Chapter, chapter 7, seven. bankruptcy no, for only $15,000 in debt? I mean, that's well, a rounding. 30, what would it be, 35 <laughs> altogether, because he's got 20. Yeah, but I know, but hers is 15. And uh, for heaven's sake, she can get it paid off in a couple of years. Do it. Don't think of bankruptcy. Good grief. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that seems, you know, you were talking a minute well, ago about see, these promises from Washington that sound so mm. good. When you're in debt and you feel the burden of that, bankruptcy can sound like, oh, my goodness, at least we're out from under this. But well, it, it carries it, a great it consequence. It ruins your credit standing. It means it's going to be very expensive to borrow money. Uh, some of your debts are not uh, uh, discharged in bankruptcy under the new law. You can't get out from under them anyhow. Why would anybody in their right mind go into Chapter 7 liquidation? They take everything you've got. What for, about debt consolidation? Well, that's no better. You let somebody else do what you ought to do for yourself. You're going to pay a fee to a guy. That, and mm -hmm. many of those people, not many of them, but a number of them, have been frauds. You pay your money to your debt consolidator, and he doesn't give it on to the people you owe money to. And you wake up now a couple really years later, debt. and you're mm -hmm. really in trouble. Yeah. Work it out yourself. It takes a little discipline. Just stop spending, cut up your credit cards, and start paying them off one at a time. Take the smallest one first, pay that off, then the next one, the next one, and then go for the ones with the most interest to them. 
uh, have enough to continue the, the, the minimum payments, but pay them down as fast as you can. That's the way to do it, and you'll succeed. This is Jeremy who says, Pat, I'm still young with many years left until retirement. Do you think now is a good time to invest a higher percentage into my company's retirement plan since funds and stocks are priced so low? Brilliant, Jeremy. Absolutely brilliant. Of course, it's the best time. Uh, stocks are coming down to historic lows, although they may not have hit bottom yet. So what you do is begin to uh, uh, do dollar cost averaging. Uh, say you're going to put... Uh, uh, $15,000 into stocks. We'll take $1,000 every month for 15 months and buy stocks each month. And so as they go down, you will pick them up cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. Then if they hit a floor and they start going up a little bit, you'll still be ahead of the game. So that's what it, I just wouldn't put a big chunk in right now because the market might go against you. But that is very smart. And get a balanced portfolio of uh, well-run companies. This is John who says, Pat, I started my own videography business about two years ago. Business is consistent now, and I make about I made about $60,000 last year. How do I get investors to help take my company to the next level? Uh, John, I hate to tell you, old buddy, <laughs> but there isn't anybody going to put any money in a deal like this. You, you didn't say how much of that 60000 went to you. I imagine uh, all of it. So the company really has zero earnings. But when you take your salary, uh, your 60000 mm -hmm. there's nothing left. Uh, and it sounds like a sole proprietorship where you're doing all the work yourself. You, you didn't even say you had other employees. So why would anybody invest in it? I think what you've got to do is continue to struggle on through and build it up to the point where you do have um, sufficient profits to take care of whatever belongs to you and your employees. And uh, uh, you have some people, uh, you know, enough to make a company. You don't have one right now. I hate to tell you. I mean, thank goodness you've got a wonderful business. Mm -hmm. God bless you. But don't look for other investors now. They'll just mess you up. That's all the time we have. Is that all the time we've got? Mm -hmm. It is. But oh, good my questions. goodness. Thank you all. Thank you for much. those questions.